At this point we have our API platform implementation up and running and we seem to have got a lot further in a lot shorter time compared to the other two implementations. Our goal is still the same as when we were using the more traditional Symphony 4 approaches. We still need to make our tests pass and ideally without changing the tests. Now this last task may be a little bit more challenging with the API platform. Our first test is that of the health check. Now whilst I don't want to change the tests unless I absolutely have to, I'm okay with changing the configuration. In this case I'm going to update the base URI to point at our local host but on a different port. Now after doing that, if we run the tests then we're going to hit up on a problem immediately and that's that the connection is refused, which seems a bit weird given that our health check or our ping endpoint doesn't need the database in any way, but because of the way that our code is set up, the error occurs because we defined a clean database function in our bhats feature context, and we tagged that with before scenario. So in other words, before any scenario or test runs, we try to reset the database, and we don't need that right now. So I'm gonna remove the before scenario tag from the clean up database method, and by remove, I simply mean adding a space between the at and the before scenario. That's enough to disable the cleanup code from running. So at this stage, if we rerun our tests, we strangely get a 400 error, and I should think that we would get a 404 error as the root doesn't exist, but everything else should be okay. And rather bizarrely, when I was writing up this video, I did get a 404, but when I was recording the video, I got a 400. Even so, when I send in a request to the slash ping endpoint using Postman, I do get the expected 404, so I'm really not sure what happened there. In order to get our health check test to pass, we need to be able to send in a get request to slash ping and get back the output of Pong. This is fairly straightforward in a standard Symfony application, but it's a little bit confusing, honestly, the first time that you do this in API platform. And a quick look at the API platform docs doesn't really reveal how to add a root that's not tied to an entity or a resource. Now we've seen that we're using Symfony's router, but the ADR pattern seemingly throws most of what we know about Symfony's routing kind of out of whack. Now things get a little bit clearer when we know that the API platform works with the concept of operations. So when looking at the router, we see that the various CRUD operations are kind of pre-configured for any entity that we add to the system. It's really important to note that an operation is a link between a resource, a root, and its related controller. We don't have an entity or a resource for our health check operation, and all we need is a root and also some way of controlling what happens when that root is requested. Now, fortunately, the API platform has some pretty good documentation on how we can create a custom operation and its related controller. I have a link for that in the show notes. We will need a custom controller, and we'll need to add a root annotation to that controller. So to begin with, I'm going to set up our controller class. And initially, this looks like your standard Symphony Fair. We're inside the namespace of app controller. We have a class called health check controller. But then things get a little unusual in that we don't actually extend anything. And if we're following the API platform's conventions, we don't have a typical controller method name like get or post or put or anything like that. We instead use underscore underscore invoke. This is a built-in PHP magic method. I have a link to a little bit more on this in the show notes. Now by defining an invoke method, it means we can call the health check controller object as if it were a function. Now this works on literally any PHP class. It's not specific to the API platform in any way. And incidentally, this does highlight that Symfony can use invocable classes for controller actions. Now again, I've got a link to this in the show notes, but at the moment it's pretty lightly documented. Now to the best of my knowledge, you don't need to use the invoke magic method as any method name will actually work. And this is because we're relying on the root annotation. I believe the intention here is to accurately follow the ADR convention. Symphony itself doesn't seem to care, but it's gonna support us all the same. Now I'm returning a JSON response, which means we're hard coded to JSON and the docs recommend that you simply return a response instead. Either way, in this case, we're not gonna get any of the benefits for serialization like say an entity would. Now, of course, you're free to add in any logic that you need here. All that matters is that you return an object. With our controller class created and our root correctly annotated, if we check the output of a debug router at this stage, we should see our newly created health check endpoint. And with that all set up, if we send in our test, in theory, everything should work, but of course I've made a mistake. Now the issue that I'm hitting on here, I think is specific to the Mac implementation of Docker. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here. But instead of using 127001, I instead have to use localhost, 
which as far as I'm aware is equivalent anyway, so I'm not too sure why it fails. Honestly, Docker and Mac, they don't play that well together. And I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but for the most seamless Docker experience, use Linux. In fact, for the best development experience possible, use Linux anyway. Though I will add in brackets to that, that's my personal opinion.